got it. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. Just need to turn this down. Yay. Okie dokie. Ah, here we are. Isn't this lovely? Welcome to Love Speaks Love, everybody. I am Denise, your host. And today I have three amazing co-hosts. So we have Martin McNichol. <laughs> we have Joe Delaney. <laughs> and we have Sifu Foggy. <laughs> so this kind of, I'd like to claim that this was my idea, but it wasn't really. It just kind of flowed. So yesterday, Martin um, was chatting with Joe live. And it, oh, I meant to watch the, the half that I missed, actually, but I, I didn't today. I shall do that later. But when you finished, it felt like it was over too quickly. I felt like both of you two felt that. <laughs> and your closing remarks, I think, Joe, or on the way there, were something like, oh, maybe next time when we gather, we'll do some of that, that light language stuff. <laughs> and that probably sowed a little seed with me. And I was like, hmm. And when Mr. McNichol there first found out that he couldn't go live on Facebook, that sowed a seed with me as well. And I thought, hmm, maybe he can anyway. <laughs> And the only time that Martin could do, I was going to do it before a show with Seafood Boggy that was a quarter past, but you couldn't do that time. So I checked on Seafood Boggy's appointment page, found that we could do our Instagram show at five o'clock. And then that sowed a seed of, oh, that means Seafood Boggy is free at the same time. So it all kind of came together. You all were free. It, it just flowed super easily. Um, so yeah, I can't claim it as my idea. It was clearly, it was clearly a, a big idea from from our bigger, our bigger people. Mm -hmm. So here we are. So our people are gathering. We normally start Love Speaks Love with a little heart to heart connect. Uh, but I will just, I can see that we are live on Facebook. Um, maybe I'll share it in a minute or two. Maybe I'll share it after the Heart to Heart Connect. So thank you everybody that's joining us. Oh, we've lost Sifu Boggy. I think he must be just sharing it. <clears throat> so part of the reason why I started Love Speaks Love and part of my reason for being here is to encourage people to live from their hearts and to speak from their hearts, to make their decisions from their hearts. And one of the ways to do that is to spend more time in our heart space. So I normally start Love Speaks Love with a little, a little thing where we do that. So I'm gonna do that now. <sighs> so I invite you to bring your awareness, your consciousness to your heart space in the center of your chest. And let us all breathe love into our beautiful hearts. And on your out breath, if you wish to breathe out love, you can do, or if you feel that it might be more appropriate right now for you to shed some stuff from your heart, then release whatever no longer serves you on your out breath. So breathe in love and breathe out anything that you're ready to let go of. And as you breathe love into your beautiful hearts, your heart energy will expand. And the love will spread to every cell of your bodies. <sighs> so extending that heart awareness out now to the heart of Gaia. And this is, this is Gaia in her ascended form. 
And this is connecting in with Gaia's crystal diamond heart. And often when I do that, I feel myself within her heart and I feel her love moving into every cell of my body. And I always feel her delight at us connecting, her love, her appreciation, and her acknowledgement and recognition of us and her gratitude for all that we are and all that we do. And extending that heart awareness out further <clears throat> to the heart of the sun and connecting in with the solar logos. and feeling that solar energy moving into every cell of our bodies, moving into our hearts. And extending that heart awareness out to the heart of source creator. And feeling source energy moving into our bodies, into our cells, into our hearts. and feeling all of our hearts together as one and feeling that beautiful heart connection between us all. All of us watching live on, the, on Facebook or watching on the replay or on YouTube. And just visualizing a beautiful web of golden light connecting all of us and seeing that web around the earth. So if your eyes are closed, just opening them whenever you're ready. You might wanna take a few sips of water. I'm thanking you all for being here now. So I'm feeling the dragons very strongly. Let me just say that to start with. <laughs> Martin's already gone to his multi-dimensional space that he goes to at the mention of the dragons and the heat at the moment. <laughs> The heat coming through is really, really intense. Um, so let's start, whoever wishes to answer, please do. Um, just sharing a little bit of where you're at at the moment, how, how you've been, how the energies are for you now. Who would like to go first? Yeah, that's who my eyes are going to as well. I'll go first. So, um, yes, there's lots of... Uh, it's been an interesting year, to say the least. Um, there's been a few departs. People were departing. Uh, there's been a few uh, disruptions that should throw me off kilter. But... Uh, I, I've moved down to the coast, moved down to the sea. I always love the sea. The energy of the waves have always cleared me and charged me. And um, I just know what the energy is doing. I know that it's just going to get more. It's just going to get stronger. And find your way to ground. Find your way to root. Find your way to flow. Find your way to grow. And that's all you can do. And that's what I'm doing. Thank you. Yeah, same here. Couldn't have said it better myself, Sifu Buggy. Your energy's changed, Sifu Buggy. I think that you've become much more um, focused and um, old master. I don't know what that means, but you do seem to be much more um, <clears throat> ancient. 
I've no idea what that means, but there we are. I've delivered that message. I think we know what it means without being able to express it properly in words, really. And I agree, it's been a peculiar year. Just over six weeks ago, I nearly went myself, you know, and um, um, I had a couple of heart attacks, which is unusual for me. It surprised me more than anybody else because I, you know, keep myself reasonably fit. It was a week after doing my 17th marathon. Um, you know, um, I, I don't know why it's happened, but I've been told internally, you know, when we get those of that information that comes in and it's not really a voice, but it's just a strong train of thought. And I got that I was being unplugged at depth. It was really to do with grief, you know, and it was to do with not grief from this personal lifetime, but grief from eons of time, you know, and I, I take these things not with a pinch of salt. I listen to everything that comes through. And then I wait for confirmation to come through. And then I did get confirmation within the same week, virtually word for word from other people, you know, uh, people that I trust. So, yeah, and um, my attitude was, oh, you're not going to use me as a model of good practice again, are you? <laughs> Does that mean I have to behave myself in some sort of a way, you know? And I got, no, no, just carry on being yourself, son. You know, because your job is to try and bring some lightheartedness to this world, even though you look as miserable as sin most of the time. You know, but I have to, <laughs> I have to say to people, that's because I'm very, very relaxed, you know, but on the inside, there is always a sort of fluent sort of flow of joy within. I do feel that, you know, and I'm not making that up. It's just that when I just zoom inwards and sort of let go of everything, I can feel this sort of joyful current that sort of drives things, you know. But yeah, it's been interesting. And um, I do feel the dragons are with us tonight. I can feel, you know, when you get that thing, I mean, we all know what we're talking about. When you get that thing that taps you on the shoulder to say, let me in. And I'm saying, like, not yet, not yet. We're trying to explain things here. So, you know, this is an equal partnership. So back off and you can maybe come in later on. But I'm in charge of whether you come in or not, not you. So that's the sort of conversation I'm having with me inside self at the moment, you know. But thank you, Denise. It's lovely to be here. Nice to see the boys. And um, over to you. Anybody else who wants to say something? <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. It's so good to be in space with the three of you and all of us in a wider sense. So... Yeah, for me, to try and talk about a year just seems like so pointless. And I, 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 I like minute, year, month, eon, it's just like, it's so malleable. And it's so like, <clears throat> I, I, I don't know where I'm half the time, to be honest. And I think that's a good, that's a good thing. But it's like, time is just so dissolving. Mm. And, you know, maybe at times like, sometimes today it felt like it was it was dragging eons and at other times i can't I, i'm just completely out of time so yeah like like my brother's here it's been there's been many challenges over this um this whatever we call this time but i was realizing today like it's always been like that it has always always been like that but we're just looking at it <clears throat> from a different angle a different perspective a different way and we we are ever ever evolving and i just i hear myself saying things and i realize yeah you were saying that two years ago you were saying that two years ago <laughs> you know the energies so it's 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 always there but i i feel like our i can feel it in this space with you three incredible beings like the the raising of the potential of humanity the raising of the potential of all of us collaborating together and remembering and co-creating is just beautiful and powerful and there's many times when those challenges come where it feels like i think i shared with joe yesterday there's many times you feel like it's not worth it i i do many times and i i'd be very open about that um but that passes too and there's something here that doesn't pass and this energy that unites us keeps it keeps it rolling keeps it keeps us showing up i mean about an hour ago i felt like absolute death if i'm, if I'm honest <laughs> so here i are so it's all good 
thank you thank you thank you for bringing this together it's so good and i love you all yeah thank you and i'd kind of i'd seen us all together in person i'd had that feeling that one day you know that there would be some sort of collaboration whether it's a light language thing or some kind of like event um that we're all together at um but it hadn't really occurred to me until it happened to bring us all together virtually um clearly the dragons were at work in this and for me this year it's been it's been another huge year I don't know where it's gone. I don't know how we're almost at the end of it. And each year we say that and each year just gets quicker and quicker. Um, and some of the stuff for me, I spend a lot of time working, working with my body. My body gets my attention with, with pain or something, something going on that's, that's random. Um, did I mention this? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So one of the things that's been going on on for me there's, there's been a lot of solar plexus stuff which is not surprising there's a lot of you know a lot of us are, are transmuting fear a lot of us have been feeling fear as well which is okay to do it's it's okay not to be in the in the space of love all the time it's all right to have these very natural human emotions um but something that's been going on the last couple of weeks is neck stuff and particularly up here where the neck and the head connect feels like it's a lot of kind of connection points but i wondered yesterday if these were related and and as i was doing my inner work can't really see but there was like a figure of eight of energy that was coming up from my solar plexus it was going into my heart and it was coming out at the back and then going going back the other way um and my feeling at the top of my head, it felt like the words that came to me were, feels like it's clamped. And then I kind of went, oh, <laughs> maybe it is. And sometimes I find when we as humans are ready to open up gateways in our bodies, gateways of energy, and activate parts of our crystalline light body when they're, when they're ready to come online, that seems to be what this is. And I wonder whether there's something to do with almost a clamp being there on either side because we weren't ready to, to have that open. And now perhaps is, is the time. So I'm being guided to share that. So I'm presuming that's something to do with, with what we're here for and you know what we might collaborate in during our get together here um what was the other thing i was going to mention yeah and just a lot of throat stuff has been going on and again that's not surprising either and lung so for me the energy centers that have been most getting my attention have been throat heart and solar plexus but also this area at the back feels I believe this is an energy center of its own when I learned Reiki I, I was taught that it was like the back of the third eye which perhaps it is kind of but it almost feels like it's a, a connecting almost like a connecting point between third eye and, and throat almost like some sort of connection point between the body and the and the mind so I'm just going to put that out there and see if any of you want to add to that if there's anything you wish to share so in chinese medicine the back of the head is actually known as the dragon's gate and uh, so so the the dragon's entrance is at the gate so in the east the kundalini is not two serpents but it's actually a dragon and the dragon uh, rolls up activating the chakras and rises up to the gate and it have both gates have to be ready for the dragon to enter for it to then rise up to the crown and, and go in and of course the opposite to that the dragon the fire goes up the pillar of light goes down so if the gate's not open the pillar of light can't go down and the dragon can't go up so that is uh, uh a that is one of the things and this 
the chakras actually, the chakra in the ancient knowledge I was taught that the chakras are actually um, a toridial field, Torah. So you've got a front and you've got a back of each one. Each chakra has a back entrance um, and or exit, and you you basically are their Torahs on their side. So the chakras that vortex energy. So it comes through. So yes, there is a a back bit, but but the bit at the neck is the the dragon's uh, the dragon's gate, the dragon entrance. So, but hey, what do I know? So if you, you were also nodding when I was saying about the figure of eight as well. Was was there anything you wanted to? Was was that also what you were saying about the the dragon's gate? You, you're muted, by the way. Sorry, sorry, is that that again? Sorry. When I was saying about the figure of eight and it, it coming up and going in there and then coming well, well, yeah, you, you, the, the figure of eight energy is, well, it, it's, you know, it's, it's part of the toy, it's part of the, the that whole thing of the, 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 the dragon moves around, it crosses over itself and creates those figure of eights. And you have, you, you, you have the, so you, in the ancient systems, you have the regions, the chakras, the auras, uh, the 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 Torah field or flower life, which is the divine feminine, the Merkaba, uh, the or Star David, which is the divine masculine, and then you have the um, you have the Dantians, and the Dantians are power cells, and but each one is a figure of eight. So you've got a connection from here to the heart, you've got a connection from the heart to the, the lower Dantian or the belly button, and then there's sort of a connection between cross that crosses between the lower. The, this the head and the lower dantian crossing through the heart so there's a figure of eight on a figure of eight on a figure of eight so there are lots of figure of eights but yeah so that crossing of energy it's um it's things are meant to cross so things come round think of if you've heard of the information of uh of uh um the hero's journey is that you come round is that you go back to the beginning, but you're now different. You're now a newer person. You're now somebody with that information. So the figure of eight is that information coming back on itself. And, you know, it's always coming back. You're, you know, it, it is that you always have an opportunity to repeat something from the past, but now in a new light, in a new way. And so the figure of eight is a powerful energy. All the same. Thank you. Actually, Wally Mike's, um, there's a question. Sifu, is that area, and I'm, I'm thinking it's here, is that area, and excuse my pronunciation, Yudsun or Chansu? Now you, now you, you're, uh, I think it's Chansu, I think it's Chansu, but it's the basically where the back of the skull is, those two point, those two points there. In Matt, you work on that massage. There's an acupressure point there, but also the energy. If it ever feels, if somebody feels dense in their neck or oh, my neck, sometimes it's not the neck. Sometimes it's higher up. But the thing is that we feel it in different ways. I, something's just dropped in as well. Um, we were mentioning before on on your show about the nerve bundle in the solar plexus, and this spot here is where all the nerve endings meet because that's where your spine twists. So all the nerve endings meet at, at that point. And it's a very, it's a very vulnerable spot as well. There, there's so much stuff that we can hold there. And it also feels like it's very strongly linked to the jaw. Um, I was feeling like, you know, the edge of the skull around there, like that was very tender too. Yeah, there's a race, we're close. I won't show because there's a, there's a very close point where on either side of the neck where you actually strike somebody and you can make them uh, go unconscious. Um, so it's the it's the void, it's the the void place. So massage in that area can release some of that blockage, some of you know that that and in the massage I used to do Shindao massage is that working on the neck and spine, the spine is the core of the body. You know, it's like 90, was it 95% of the nerves run through the spine, you know. Uh, um, and so the, so the spine is the pillar of light, the spine is the, the column of the body, but also, and you get all that energy going up and the energy going down and yeah, it, it hits here, it hits on the neck. And if you've got that tension there, it is the gates blocked, the dragon's gates are blocked and you need to 
open that up to allow the energy to to go through and to and to flow uh so so um the the dragon dogs shaman will often say illness is blockage clear the blockage you won't have Ill illness so you you get your energy to flow however whether whether it's through tai chi whether it's through running whether it's through eating a banana however you do it, it doesn't matter just find a way that works for you and and let the energy flow because when fling, things are flowing things are growing and things are glowing and things are knowing ish but anyway Thank you. I also chuckled at the dragon's egg comment because I reshared a code that I shared two years ago, which was a dragon's egg rejuvenation codes. So yeah, so dragon. Dr. Joe, is there anything that you would like to add at this point? Well, yes, um, I agree. It's all what the human race is going through in my opinion. I nearly said in my humble opinion, but I don't have a humble opinion. <laughs> in my opinion, I think the whole of the human race is going through a, a realignment process because this energy that's powering in now, I call it a tsunami of love. It's associated in my view, at least with the sacred feminine energy. And within the body that's associated with something called the parasympathetic nervous system which is the vagus nerve, generally speaking, that's cranial nerve 10. And what actually happens is at the back, there's two routes of entry for the vagus nerve. Sometimes it's called the polyvagal nerve because there's what's called a dorsal route. That's the back, you know, like a dorsal fin of a, a shark. And then there's the front route, which is called the ventral route. And it was thought that many, many eons of time ago, thousands upon thousands of years, it was almost like a conspiracy or a fall from grace that occurred as a consequence of the lesson for mankind to learn and stuff like that. But what actually happened was there was an insertion put in at the bottom of the tree of life. Now, there's a point here at the back of the head called the arbor vitae, and that means the tree of life. So if you want to Google arbor vitae, and I think what I see in my mind is it's almost like the block was put in, which actually blocked off two of the spheres of the 12 tree of the 12 spheres of the tree of life. So we've basically as a race. We've been working on 10 spheres for a long time. But recently what's coming in is, you see, it's coming up my spine now in a big way and I'm getting all sorts of feelings in my body now. This, this means to me, at least, it means, go ahead, son, you're on the right track, carry on, you know, but give give somebody else a chance in a minute because you don't half go on, you know. But, uh, but what I'm saying is, as the sacred feminine energy is powering in more and more, and it's really amping up and ramping up at the moment because it's getting closer and closer, there's a realignment and a rebalancing process that's associated with a big purge. And the purge is really, it's basically taking the masculine component and releasing its grip. Now, the grip's mostly been on the throat. So that's why that throat thing is coming through, Denise. And the throat, from a draconian point of view and a very, very early ancient sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Almost like from the beginning of time, at the root you know, that's associated with the dragons, you know, even before the Lyrans and stuff like that. So the dragons are a very, very ancient race. And I think sometimes now they're powering back in now in a positive way. And that's why I think that we can feel a lot of sort of heat changes going on in our body. But the important thing is to allow the dragons to come up and almost let that vibration resonate through the whole of the throat because it's at the top of the throat that will clear that blockage. So that's why when we increase in vibration like that, and sometimes you can see, but I'm seeing all those eights, you know, intertwining like that. I'm basically unplugging us from there. But in my view, it's associated with completely finding your own voice. 
and allowing your soul to express itself fully without restriction. And I think once you get the courage to do that, that will unblock that as well. And then you will open up then at the level of the crown then to more expanded consciousness as well. So it's definitely an energetic process. The other thing is a lot of us are very contracted and I've learned this myself is we're very contracted in the throat and the chest area. And consequently our shoulders move forward there. And there's a point in our left pectoral muscle here, our left chest muscle that we subtly contract as a consequence of fear processing okay so there's actually a trigger point it's called the cardiac trigger points here and sometimes you can find it and if you put your finger on it and just press it slightly if there's any um if there's any pain at all or tenderness it means it's obstructed and what you can do is you can actually hold on to it pin it down and then move your arm back all the way out and move it backwards and that then reconnects all those nerves and all that flow then and that's why sometimes when you have a heart attack you know you get that pain that goes all the way down through your biceps muscles and into your fingertips and sometimes leave you know this this third finger here is associated with the heart you know so th there's so many connections G just to wrap this bit up i think also <sighs> When that comes through, you know, that'll come through in a minute. So really that's associated with your perineum, you know, your opening to the root chakra. So if you can use that and allow your throat to open up, being vibrated at the perineum, it will clear out the sacral block, right? And then if you can keep it open, it will just sort of expunge all the crap of years and allow it to come out like a big flow out of the crown of our head. And that to me is the way forward. And I think because people have been so afraid and so blocked in those first two chakras, it's almost like letting go of yourself now and really relaxing and allowing all these emotions to express themselves and be transformed through the heart. Other than that, I can't think of anything else at the moment. That's awesome. And you've, um, I got that as well, that this was something that had been closed off and that, yeah, that you've, you've really confirmed that. And there's so, I'm feeling so much emotion as well. And what you say about the contraction, that's been very much in my awareness, the contraction, like contraction of my solar plexus, which contracts my lungs, feels like there's a, there's a, a point kind of in line with, with the, the bottom of your rib cage. Um, that there's a point there, which I think might be where that nerve bundle is that um, Sifu mentioned. And that, I feel contraction in that, which automatically contracts my lungs. I feel there's a line of energy kind of between, between those two. They feel very connected. Martin, my dear, anything that you would like to add at this point? Yes, I would, because um, everything that was shared there um, is in total alignment with what I'm feeling, what I'm seeing. I just want to say to Sifu, that as soon as you said the word Dantian, I saw you as this just this giant energy ball warrior. It was just incredible. Oh, my God. So I was just like in awe of that, just at that word. Um, and everything that you both shared, um, it's funny as well, Denise, like the, in our community this this week, we did a crystalline light body embodiment. And I know you you didn't know that, but you mentioned those exact, I, didn't, I don't think you said embodiment, but crystalline light body. And <clears throat> just as you have spoken, this has come through before, and it's just taking what you have shared there. And again, when you talk about that, that placing of that, that's absolutely, um, I, I got that as well and I experienced it myself and I actually had it released, let's say in a way for me through a, a massage. It was a Japanese massage process that I can't even remember. I got it in Dubai um, and, and that happened. But also what I'm getting now, like it was shared before and like um, Sifu was talking about, we're, co we're coming back with new understanding, coming back with new understanding. We're coming back looking at the same thing from a different way. What is coming about this is to begin to see this not as a blockage, but to see this as a, 
this is an invitation of a of a reframe of this to see this as something that is tempering the energies to allow it to come through in only the the degree the intensity that that the the being and the body is is ready for in this moment and so rather seeing it as a blockage that's that's been put there and again i agree with this in one in I, i've experienced it but if we begin to see it as like kind of like if we look at a, a thermostat in your home the way you can turn the heat up turn the heat down so rather than a blockage that we're getting rid of it's we could say it's it's something that we can temper now and that there was a stage in this fall of consciousness that we weren't able and our bodies weren't able and through the process we went through it would have fried the circuits and now we have the ability if we choose to reframe and see this is actually something that we can we can dial up we can actually take empowerment with and allow that that to move through so this, it's just a another way that i'm i'm seeing it and and feeling it and just <clears throat> further to how you mentioned every time i go into that kind of space of channel or open what it, whatever it is whenever i'm especially when it's vocal channeling the second that energy moves away i get this click click at that point there's a little click every time it's it's inaudible to anyone i think i don't know i i can hear it so there's just this little click and then we're done so i've also heard this term the seat of the soul or the entry point of the soul into the being but i also don't really see it as that way because i don't think the soul is in the body the body is in the soul so yeah just complete confirmation and alignment with everything that was shared and you my beautiful brothers can give it uh language that i cannot and uh, for me it's more energetic and um conceptual and big picture so yeah real real alignment and really feeling that we have this potential now to empower any, anything that was seen to be imposed upon us now we can see we can reframe it to see that you know it's actually something that is used for our benefit and it's used and we can take empowerment of that now, if we so choose. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you for voicing that, and you, you put that in such a, a beautiful way. Um, and I <clears throat> yeah, totally, totally concur with that. Um, now, I'm sure there's there's going to be some dragon pose coming in and some light language, but is there anything that anybody... Oh, do I ask that now? Okay, before we move into that, something that I was um, nudged to ask about is, is how are you feeling about this next year coming up? It's not in, in, you know, I don't think any of you really do predictions as such, but just how are you feeling about it and anything that you want to share as we're towards the end of, of this year and the start of this new one, which to me is very special with all the twos. My numerology is a two, I'm in 11, 29, 11, which is two. Ah, oh, and at least two of you here are 11s as well. Martin, you're, are you as well, Joe? I, I'll have to work out your numerology, but I know the other two are both 11s as well. Um, and it just feel, it feels super potent. And to me, it just feels really kind of vibrant as well and I think lots of things are going to be coming online I feel more of us are going to be in our truth and living our truth and working our truth if, if that makes sense like <clears throat> what we do with our lives is going to be more in alignment um so yeah I'm ex I'm excited about it who would like to share I'll have a go. See, where, where I'm sort of up to is I'm not taking any notice of symbols and numbers and um, anything, pictures and images anymore, because I think that we're living or we're being invited to live beyond that now, you know, because before all those things was the great stillness, wasn't it? You know, the great zero point. And I think where I'm up to now is most of the time, my thinking's almost stopped until I have to put it into action, really, to think about things. So I, I spend a lot of time in like quiet place, really. And um, 
I really am more and more just working in the day as it presents itself. So I just allow the day to present itself. And no matter what it brings, is just try and make the best of that and do something constructive if possible. And what do I mean by constructive? I just mean what feels open and flowing, you know. And if that inspires me to take action, then that's what I do. And if I don't feel the push, I said this to Martin yesterday, if I don't feel that spirit or my soul is moving me, you know, I don't move myself. Do you, do you see what I mean? It's not it's not laziness, really. It's a sort of rest, recuperation and restoring sort of phase, really. So I have moments. And when, when you know, before I would think, you know, you're lazy, you should do this, you should do that. And I realized today that that's just an old con job, really, because I just try and work with the energies now. And how do I feel? In my heart, I feel that the next year that's coming up, you know, um, is positive. I feel very, very positive about it. I, I think that, you know, people are mentioning here authenticity and we're being absolutely un unable now to hold our truth back, you know, and I think that's what's actually happening. I think this great big wave is actually pushing underneath our unconscious, personal and collective. It's bringing the unconscious up so that we have to face our own unconsciousness so it becomes conscious so that we have to face everything that we've pushed down because we've we've pushed it down either because we were afraid or ashamed or whatever and none of that really matters now you know it just matters that it comes up we allow it we see it on the screen of our consciousness or conscientiousness and then we say oh i see what that was meant you know and then if we just need to see it it will leave then and it will allow all the energy that's been repressing it to come back on so Mar martin mentioned the word empowerment we feel new power flow in as we accept and see clearly what was meant now, sometimes if it doesn't go away because we see it, it means, and this is the way I just explain things, it means that we've got to take an action on it. So sometimes there are actions that we need to take. For example, we might have to go and face somebody and say, look, I'm awfully sorry about that situation. I apologize. See what I mean? So sometimes there are difficult things to do, but it's almost the test of how, how far are you willing to go on this one to be clean and, and stuff like that, you know? So, yeah, I feel positive about the future. Um, I do feel the negativity come in, especially when I'm tired. But when I'm like that, once again, I just try and care for myself. And with what's recently happened to me as well, it's given me new insights as well on um, that there may be some doors or some rooms that were locked that needed opening for me. And I've been able to see in there as well to go and clean them out, redecorate them and then move on then as well, you know. So, yeah, I feel I feel an underlying sense of positiveness, really. And it's not a false hope. It's just um, I'm just being honest with the way that I feel. And from here. It feels open and flowing, and um, as Boggy would say, I'll just keep going because it will re it will lead to more glowing. See, okay. He's a poet. He didn't even know it. <laughs> well, it was interesting. I'm not one to, and it's not a prediction as such, more about a feeling. But back in uh, 2019, when everybody was talking about. What 2020 was going to bring and it's like the next three years 20 2020 2021 yeah 2022 i, I it, it was like what, what we've been talking about this upsurge of energy this flow of energy and and for some people it'd be very uh it, it would be uh very um, turning the world upside down. And for some people, it would be very surging, very powerful. And, and I saw it as 2020, the energy would be very physical, that that in in, in 2020, things, things will be flipped on the head or things will be revealed in a very physical way. In 2021, I saw it far more. So so physical in, in Eastern philosophy is chi. Chi is physical, physical vitality. So I saw it very much flowing in the physical way, in physical vitality. Things would physically um, be, be turned on their head or, or, or come to some sort of um, some sort of uh, some sort of uh, nexus point, some sort of uh, big uh, explosive point. Then, then this year I saw it being far more emotional, far more in an emotional way. And next year, 
was the Shen. So this is Jing, next year Sing in Shen. So it will happen far more spiritually. Things will happen far more internally. Things and and it could be an upheaval. It could, like say, each year. In some ways, it's an upheaval, but for some people, it's just more of a, a, a revealing, physically, emotionally, and next spiritually. Um, and so, so the, where we've been saying about you know being off, authenticity, it's very much what I feel is very much spiritually. Is next year you need to be authentic spiritually uh especially and 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 the spiritual energy will will surge and i mean knowing sort of what nasa discovered back in 2008 and you know we are in essence in the golden age or the golden race whatever we call it and for the next 2000 years the energy will just get stronger and stronger and stronger um but there is definitely next year it's definitely going to be more of a a spiritual thing for a lot of people or an aha moment i think more and more people will wake up and i think more and more people are going to see things in a new light however you interpret that is down to you yeah beautiful thank you um and it feels like anything and this has started already anything that isn't in alignment whether it's in our outer world or our inner so anything in our body that isn't quite in alignment it's showing itself to us now like and if we're ignoring it it's <laughs> it's really gonna you know it's here um yeah martin yes my love <laughs> so yeah i as much as possible don't talk about anything future uh, if i can um but what I would say, I, I always want to bring it to direct experiential now knowing and something that I received um, recently was this just this one kind of um, just this one sentence. Basically, it was like your role is going to completely change. So that's I said uh, it did say going to. So I received that. What that means, I have no idea. And it will it will make itself known. But what I would say is whenever I was seeing, as you spoke about the word year and I heard my brothers talking about it, I was seeing the, the why and then space ear. And so you listen now. Why for you ear? Listen, listen within now. And more and more as we step out of this illusion of time, with that we more and more we are not bound by time we're not bound by space we are in this world but not of it uh, less and less that we will have these recurring patterns less and less we will have these also within our body what these collective beliefs that what happens as you move through years as you move through time because they are not intrinsic to our nature they are collective beliefs like aging like uh, certain things will happen in our bodies um, biologically they are not they are not absolute truths they are just collective beliefs and they are part of what we talked about before that insertation and a lot of these things of you know and the manipulation of the dna um, those things are not absolutes they are relative and they are changeable everything is changeable but the why here if i listen to what is within there is something within that is unchangeable that doesn't move that doesn't age that was never born and can never die and it's never separate from us and it's not something it's not a thing at all and even when we speak of it we are only alluding to something that can't be spoken of so i spoke to amazingly yesterday neil donald walsh who is the the author of Conversations with God. Some of you may, may know that book, um, that series of books. And instead of sharing something that, you know, whatever comes here about this now moment or even moving forward, he shared with me something that I feel would be... Uh, actually, Joe asked me for something practical yesterday, and I think I received it afterwards. So what he said was, before any thought, before any word, before any action, before anything, ask yourself the question, what has this got to do 
with the evolution of my soul. And he said, apply that question to everything and anything, no matter what it is, whether it's deciding to uh, watch a movie, deciding to enter a relationship, deciding to quit your job, no, no matter what it is, deciding to do a spiritual practice or not, no matter what it is, ask, make that question automatic before, previous to any thought, word or action. And that in the silence, that great unknown, it will reveal itself and it doesn't matter what year it is because you're not in the year, you're not in the time. But from that great silence will come the wisdom of your soul. If And as long as, what and what he did say as well, whatever you get, whenever you get that knowing and it goes against maybe what you thought you wanted, you have to follow your soul. You have to follow that which is for your highest soul's evolution. So wherever we are, whenever we are, I thought that was an amazing question to really just ground us in the why here to listen to the now here and whatever year it is that question will always be valid spot on thank you i was given a word um when i was kind of feeling into next year and i got the word renewal and when i was feeling into renewal because that almost seems like old stuff, but I got the word anew. And maybe there isn't such a word as annual, but that's what it feels it is. It's like starting anew, starting afresh. <sighs> Joey muted. So annual is annual, which is year, which is to go back to what Martin's just brought in. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, okay, so I'm feeling that the codes are like ready to come through. Um, and I'll just say to people watching, if you want to just say I'm open to receive, um, but also if there's anything that you, you don't want to receive, you don't have to at all. You can just say, no, thank you. That's not for me. Um, because yeah, this, this is absolutely, absolutely your choice. Um, but I'm going to mute and I'm just going to leave it open to whoever wishes to share first. Shukapadan <laughs> Tura ina ki sama e tua. Tira ti ko i no somo tura yinan. Tira e nga ma i te unpraka anta an. Siena ti tura ina se e tua unta ke e moe. Alion te se pi am te se ku am te ke ko se e mi. No ko fi pi an te ko le man se ka adu o ne hera taks na hadzutu. Muat ne head sulam net at the os anekarasat net etch. I go some near at the oak is an yokrim hatel. Mot at is et on as ot et hoch na hadra met, she an ot ahmohot and set. Mulla la yimula muguasu, Mulla cook and dab yalo dam. Holalia, Mokatia nota, Holandia contasma, Holo le mado, Bolam jikna, Ulayumu, Ulayukumajava, Mark Holandia, Ulamu, Ulayuana Wakova, Hotnaya. 
Ula yukulakam. Ho, ho, ho. Wusiza, wusa, ja wusi, wu, ja wusi, ja ja wu, na wusi, a wu, ji, ji ja wu, ji wu, a wusi, ja wu, ji ji, wa wusi, ji a wu, ji ja wu. Wusija, wuzi, wuja. Wusija, wuzi, wuzi. A wuja, wuzi. Cha wuzi, wazi, wuza. Mi, wuzi, wuzi, ya wuja, nizi. A wuzi. O ja wuzi. Ye are ne karadikete aradikete und aradike on und et stut ta 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 ta. He ele hera ne karadikete bonu hi ta 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 ta. He ele her no korena kai. Wish or in a cave or a ticket or in a keeper, but but it un hal air 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 air. Here a la car and a corinna lie, it or nigh, o used. Wee o her na a cat or na an east. Ha el aron, ho el a cake and ot oi ashed. Ho el a hair ne are to go and new it ta 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 ta. Hele care and a corre to cut a barra to get put or a la care and a corre to get a ra to cut a. Kel e hara de kudu ama ki ist ora. Kel e hel nt ud ad ara de kudu kora de kudu kora de kudu om. Hekla ke hara de kora de kudu kora de kudu unyu yu du 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 da 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 da. He el hara de kudu nama kere de kudu odun. Kul hara de kihana kur de kudu kusht. Da para de kudu hara de kudu kora na unyu yara de kudu. He e l ara de kudu hana ma kudu kudu. Kul la ke hara de kudu ora. Hol hier an der Kur, it er hat gut gehabt, an mit der Tutte, da, 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 da. He, Herr, ne, gut, gut, hör, na, ich, gut, gut, hör. Hol, le, Herr, ne, gut, gut, hör, ne, gut, 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 Kan har det gått? Har man det gått? Det går. Har det gått? Det går. Har det gått? Det går. Det går. Har det gått? Det går. Det går. Hej, är det hur ni går? Hur mycket har det gått? Det går. Det går. Hur är det? Är det nog hur det går? Just. Alla har det gått? Har det gått? Har det gått? Det går. 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 Det and I'm just seeing two octahedrons in those spaces that we were talking about. So on either side in those little indentations. ขอรักให้เอลเฮอร์ดูกูยิ่งชุดตัดตัดตัดอุ่นอับรุนนำฮาร์ดูกูอุ่นอาร์ดูกูตัดตัดตัดอาร์ดูกูเดอาร์ด
crepper in terms of a pretty in the ampake it already and the packet in the capretti and in a market tea and anta a in a market tea to already tea and take a shes to opera and unpake a in a marae to or a packet in the a it is a side to or packa and um take a to auto um teach or it it a tika a it for an tia sa e la ma cure it a in a kai su ah ta你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你知道你
Anybody else wishing to share or are we feeling complete? So we're just taking a moment to bring our awareness back to our heart. And I suggest drinking plenty of water. If you can connect to trees anytime today or tomorrow or the next few days, that will be awesome. First of all, because trees are awesome and they like to be hugged, but also they are antennae. So they're transmitting cosmic frequencies into the earth and also our Gaia frequencies out to the cosmos. And be gentle with yourself. That was that was quite a hefty activation <laughs> right there. So just be gentle with yourself. Allow any emotions to rise that might be there. Allow yourself to feel them and express them in whatever way feels right. Dancing, stamping your feet, having a good old sob or a good old laugh or whatever way feels right for you. Can I just share something? Mm -hmm. Please do. Very, very strongly. Um, and that is one tree in particular, and that is the pine tree. And it is the, this, <clears throat> the energy of this tree, but also so much unknown and untapped potential through the pine tree and its various guises. And it's, it's, it's a tree that is prolific across the planet and most people will have probably fairly close proximity to one and just being guided just through this energy and through this consciousness and through these beings that we are connecting with now and they are calling us back to the magic that they do provide and not only 
is that in the the tree itself it's in the environment that that creates and what that provides in its immediate environment not only through the mycelial network but its direct environment around it and what it provides and the potentials within that and the magic within that so it's just um a little nod to the humble pine tree And I've got through this whole thing is about politeness, that we're over polite. We're over polite. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. Don't mean, mince your words. Don't waste your words. Because this is really about time and energy management. Simple as that, really. So you are in charge of how you manage your energy and the time that you give it to it. So uh, don't waste your breath. I don't know why they, they just come through. Don't waste your breath. And it's really, uh, that will then discern the difference between awake and awoke. <laughs> so this is away from wokeism and into awakeism, really. So there we are. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Ah, <laughs> oh, wise words. Wise words from great wise seafoods. Um, whatever happens next year, good, bad, indifferent, breathe, breathing is good. And remember, um, remember how you breathe affects how you feel and how you act. If you're breathing shallow, rapid and fast, your thoughts become shallow, rapid and fast. Your actions become shallow, rapid and fast. Breathe slowly deeply quietly and hopefully your thoughts your actions will be the same breathe flow let go and grow but as any good see if you should say hey what do i know <laughs> thank you for this denise it's been marvelous and it's lovely to see you boys nice yeah, to see you beautiful thank you so much thank you <laughs> yeah thank you all for your for your wisdom for your time for your energy for your sharings i feel very honored and privileged to have shared this space with you and to call all three of you my dear dear heart brothers <sighs> thank you also to everybody who's been watching us live and I know many of you are sharing your codes with us too. Um, and whether that's live in this now moment or in a future now moment on a replay or on YouTube, um, it's all now. So thank you, everybody. I feel like I'm just gonna lie flat on my back for a little while <laughs> um, or maybe go outside and run, I'm not sure, run to the trees. Um, what else to say? So. Yeah, if you feel to share this, that would be awesome. Thank you. It feels like this has been a, a potent message that would be amazing to reach as many people as possible. Um, and it will be on my <clears throat> YouTube channel, which is Inner Peace with Denise. And if you, if you venture over there and you like it, then please subscribe. Um, I'm very, very slowly <laughs> on... January 1st, it will be four years since I first did my YouTube channel and I've not quite got 400 people and I really would like a thousand go on, go so on. that I can have a community. <laughs> and at this rate, it's going to take me another six years, which is way too slow. So anyway, um, thank you, everybody. This has been absolutely magical and amazing. I love you all very dearly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to everybody watching. Love, 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 love. Bye-bye.